Okay, here we are. <laughs> this is um, this is a, a little bit of uh, my insanity here. You see how I, I love my picks, all my different picks. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> Brian Kehoe from Dunlop has been very gracious with uh, with me over the years, and uh, he's helped me a bunch here. And so, first off, let's let let's explain a little bit, or hopefully you can hear the difference. I've got some. I've, here's a, a Dunlop pick that's called a Big Stubby. This pick is two two millimeters, which uh, is uh, is thicker than the one I use. There's one of the one of the ones that I use. It's the 1.5 Delrin, and this is the Big Stubby. So let's start with the Big Stubby and play. Okay, I'm going to go between the Big Stubby and this super thin Jim Dunlop pick that I, I don't know exactly which ones these are called. It's a nylon pick, USA nylon, but this is 0 .46, 0 .46 millimeters. And I'm going to go between the two, see if you can hear the difference. Okay, back to the... You... You might not be able to hear the difference that much between these two. The feel. Back to, that was the thin one. Now when I get down to the low strings, let's listen to the, uh, let's listen to the thin one on the low strings. Now listen to this one. Back to the light. Pick this very paper thin, I say paper thin, it's just thin, very thin, like Joe Maphis used, and I guess he held it close. I'm not used to playing this lick with this pick, but. Somebody who's who's good at that style could use that pick and really make it sound. So anyway, back to the th the thick one. You know, I haven't talked to Bill Kirchin, but he, he plays Hot Rod Lincoln. That's the Hot Rod Lincoln lick. He plays that, that song so great. You, you got to check out Bill Kirchin playing Hot Rod Lincoln. It's insane. Um, but anyway, so, um, so let's go down the line of the picks. Let's start with a thin one and see if you can hear a difference. We're going to start with, uh, with the thin ones over here. And if you... When you're strumming, like if you were playing acoustic, you're doing a lot of strumming. Let's go back to the thick one. Y'all probably can't hear a, a big difference, but, but so many different guitar players have so many different styles. So there's guys that can play really fast with these picks and I don't know how they really do it. I, I'm just not, I can't do the thin pick thing. I have to, so anyway, let's, let's go through this a little bit. Um, that's a thin one here. That's 0.46. 
Here's one that jumps us up to a Dunlop 0.73. This is a, uh, or no, let's go up to 0.60. So we went to 0.46 to 0.60. Now let's go to 0.73 Prime Tone Sculpted. These are really nice picks. Dunlop Prime Tone 7.73. See, this is more in the ballpark of what I'm used to. Let's, okay, let's go up to one. This, this is what I switched to. This is what I've been using for the last several years. A celluloid heavy pick. Now this pick in is in white celluloid, and I've heard <laughs> Brian Kehoe told me that the black ones sound they're a little bit different flex. So that if you change the flex, you're going to get a little bit of a different tone. Um, Here's one that's pretty thin. This is pretty thin too. It's not it's not as thin. This is a Pat Simmons from the Doobie Brothers. This is one of his picks. So you can hear the the celluloid sounds different than the nylon. The nylon to me is it's a little bit darker. It's a little darker. This is a medium celluloid. It gets a little darker. Here's one of Big Sandy. Big Sandy's great strumming um, uh, acoustic player. Great. And it, this is a pretty thin pick. It's a Jim Dunlop. Uh, I guess they, they're kind of patterned after the old Herco picks. This is a .88. So anyway, let's go up, let's keep going up. Let's go up to the 73, 88, 90.96. Here it get a little darker to the one. So these last four are all these prime tone, Dunlop prime tone 1.0, really nice picks. Then up to what? Uh, then up to one point one four. That's very close to what I'm used to a Delrin pick, and then here's the one that I use. And then um, here's one that's uh, very typical of what jazz players use, and it's uh, small. It's a little too small for me. I'm just not used to it. But it's uh, it's a jazz three Jim Dunlop. I think Eric I think Eric Johnson uses one of these. I think Joe Bonamesa uses one of these. It's a little too small for me. The Les Paul pick that I have is kind of small like this, but maybe not quite as heavy. And then of course up to the big stubby this one. So let's go back down to the very thin ones. Let's try this this one, 40 point. I can barely play with this one. It feels mushy to me, but it's got a it's got a super bright sound. I like that compared to the darker. That's the thick one, the thick one. All right, so what happened is recently, I after, after, after landing on these and liking these heavy celluloid picks, while doing our live streaming, I had to learn a lot of, had to learn a lot of my old licks. 
and play and uh, switch and learn and play different a bunch of different songs as opposed to doing a whole tour where I'm playing basically the same 20 or 25 songs for maybe as much as three months in, or whatever. But now I'm having to go back and learn all these other things. And so I discovered, well, what I did is I switched back. I, oh, that's not the right one. I switched back to the 1.5 millimeter Delrin pick. And I discovered that with the heavier picks that I can play more aggressive. I cannot play as aggressive as I can with just a normal heavy pick like this one so I'm back I and so like I've discussed a million times with a bunch of different people and Brian Kehoe and everything uh, it's muscle a lot of it is muscle memory so if you're if you if you've learned to play the Joe Mafis style with one of these very thin picks then then I can understand how you probably would not be comfortable at all with a, a heavier pick like the jazz guys or the big stubby like some of the jazz guys or the gypsy jazz guys use pretty thick picks too. So um, I'm back using these, but uh, in it's a world of picks. I I would I would I would suggest not going down this road don't don't get pick envy you may want to consider if you're doing a, a a different sounding part maybe for a if you're going to overdub an acoustic guitar over what your normal guitar is i would suggest trying one of these thin picks is for strumming acoustic it's really good or if you want to try to get a little bit of a different sound in the studio then going to one of these thin ones is uh is kind of a cool idea here i've got one from uh, james hetfield and i use this <laughs> i use this little pick a lot it's a 0.73 and it's 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 got a it's got a good sound and it's a little bit more pointed if you can see that too that makes a difference as well so but listen whatever you i i guess the thing is dance with dance with who brung you with picks because uh, you've got the muscle memory, you've practiced all these licks with that particular style of pick. Um, switching between two different ones is is not real easy to do. And uh, but for my money, I'm back to the 1.5 millimeter Delrin picks made by Dunlop. And uh, hope this helps. Thanks a lot.